are, many of us have just started back to, um, to school. And you know the students have started back to school, and uh, and sorry, I'm just looking at him. I'm, I'm hearing something from my friend in Colombia, and he, it looks like he may be experiencing some technical difficulties. So uh, I will go ahead though and get started because Jeff is first, and then I will respond to him. Hard to hard to multitask. So welcome, and uh, let's go ahead and talk about getting back to school with Globe Mission Mosquito. So tonight we're going to be discussing how you can use this Mosquito Habitat Mapper tool, which is part of the Globe Observer app, in both formal and informal education settings. So you'll hear and see some pictures that are telling you how it's being used in classrooms, as well as in some after-school settings. And as always, please um, think about ways in which you might be using it or you might think of using it, and then add your information into the chat box because we all can benefit from hearing some of these ideas. Next slide, please. So with the Globe um, Mosquito Habitat Mapper, we started having the Mosquito Habitat Mapper be a tool that was available um, on the Globe Observer okay. app on May 29th of 2017. Since then, there have been 15,982 observations that have been submitted. So that is absolutely huge. Of course, we still need a whole lot more. You can see the world map here and you can see where we have gotten these observations from. And you see a lot of areas where we continue to need to get observations. And of course, uh, the, the, the interesting thing about many of the, the environmental parameters that we study with the GLOBE program and through NASA as well, is that we need regular ongoing information. Just having you know, one or two observations is never enough. But here you can see where these observations have been submitted from over the past you know, two years. And then I also like to give us an update because uh, we, we also want this momentum to be increasing and increasing. Um, so in the past month, we have had 1,263 more Mosquito Habitat Mapper data submissions. So every month we start to see, you know, more and more submissions coming. Remember that even if you are not seeing mosquitoes, if you have a mosquito trap out there, which you can you make using a, a plastic two liter soda bottle, or you can actually just take anything that you'll remember to check on a regular basis during active mosquito season, put some water in it. Sometimes you can even bait the water with a little alfalfa pe pellets or some fish food, um, put them outside or even inside because mosquitoes will also um, lay their eggs and, and hatch inside and then check them on a weekly basis. Even if you're not seeing larva, these are still important data that we want to know about. So just continue to be sending your observations in whether or not it's active mosquito season. Next slide, please. Um, over the last 30 days, these are our top submitters. Something that I really love to point out is that we have people submitting data from all over the world. And certainly we see right now that um, our friend Inez, who is on tonight, and some other friends as well from Brazil, they are leading the pack right now. And I'm pretty sure now that school's back in session and Mr. Getting Science done, Jeff Bauman, has some control, we're going to start to see uh, um, USA up here in, in, in the lights again and, uh, and, 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 you know, start to see we have a lot more regular observations coming in from them. So uh, let's go folks and a huge thanks to all of the countries that are leading the pack by regularly submitting their data. This means if they've made it to the top data collectors, they have made it in, the, in our top data submitters every single week during the past month. And top data submitters means they're the ones who've been submitting the most data from all of the countries around the world. So again, y'all rock. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. This Globe Mission Mosquito Campaign is basically a campaign where we're connecting citizen scientists of all ages to help us monitor 
changes in the frequency, the range, and the distribution of potential disease vector mosquitoes. And one more click. And you are helping by conducting research to explore how these vary in response to changes in environmental conditions, things like temperature, relative humidity, precipitation. Those are very important factors in vegetation land cover in whether or not you're going to have active mosquitoes in your area. And one more click. This is a really nice fusion of the formal GLOBE program, which is focused on formal education, and Globe Observer Program, which is open to everybody. So it's really nice to bring these two programs together. Next slide, please. Um, with the Mosquito Habitat Mapper tool, I just like to remind people there are four steps. You do not have to do all four of the steps. The first step is basically you've got your cell phone or your iPad and you're going out, you're identifying places that have standing water, and those are potential mosquito breeding habitats. So even if there's no mosquitoes, there you go. You're going out and regularly identifying where there could be mosquitoes. If you happen to see larvae or mosquitoes or eggs or pupa, then you're doing a sample and count. You need no fancy equipment for that. If you find some larvae and you want to attempt to photograph them and try to figure out which kind of larva you have, if they're one of the, the species that are able to transmit some of these diseases, all you have to do is have a six to ten dollar magnifier that you put on your cell phone or your iPad and you put that on your your phone and then you're able to take pictures and attempt to identify which kind of mosquito larva you have and then the fourth step is to identify the breeding site so three of these steps you need no special equipment for whatsoever Two of these steps, you don't need to even have active mosquitoes out there. And um, for only one of the steps, you do need to have the larva and then have this little magnifier that you stick on your cell phone or your iPad camera to be able to take pictures and then try to identify the species that you have. Next slide. So tonight's agenda, we'll be hearing from our Jeff Bowen, Mr. Getting Science Done at Shoemate Middle School in Gibraltar, Michigan. He's gonna be telling us um, about how he runs his program. And it, it's just super important to get a chance for educators to be able to listen to other educators and hear how on earth do they get it done in their setting. Not that you can you know, copy that entirely, but it's just always nice to listen to and then feel like, wow, I think that I might be able to take a kernel of what I heard here and implement that into the setting that I'm in. Um, Jeff has students that are submitting to the International Virtual Science Symposium. Every year they submit projects along a whole continuum of, of different, uh, different themes that they focus on. I've had the, the, the very nice luck of working with some of his students for the past couple of years and last year I worked with some working with mosquitoes and they're going to be carrying on their research this year and he is an extremely dynamic and engaged educator whom I, I, I just adore and then hopefully we will be hearing from Erqui Martinez he teaches grades 6, 7, 8, and 9 in a regular day school. He works with methodology with students on Saturdays in the city of Barranquilla and then another city to the south in Colombia. And he's also energetic and dynamic and just absolutely adores identifying a mosquito larva. So uh, really, really excited to be sharing the successes of these two champions. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to let Mr. Getting Science Done, Jeff Bauman, take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. Jeff Bauman here. Um, tonight I am at the University of Michigan Dearborn and uh, just let my college students out a little bit early tonight. And um, I get to share some of the best practices that we're doing at Shoemate Middle School with you. A um, little background like I said, I teach middle school science at Shoemate, which is part of the Gibraltar School District. And I'm also an adjunct professor at the University of Michigan Dearborn, where I focus on science education, educational technology. My hashtag that gets said a lot is a belief of mine that every day we do meaningful science. Uh, Dr. Dixon Butler said we learn science by doing science. I kind of plagiarized that and said hashtag getting science done because it's hip, it's cool. It's, it was trendy at the time and I still love it. So it is what it is. So 
Um, next slide, please. Um, right here. Um, just uh, to connect with me, if you're looking to work, uh, my email is right there, bombajay at jibdis.net. Um, if you want to see the cool science that we're doing, um, I host pictures and labs and all sorts of good stuff on um, our Facebook page, which is Pumate Science. You can go ahead and like that any second. Just take a break from listening to me and click that like button. It's totally worth it. Shameless plug. And if you want to find more of my, uh, my rambling, I'm on Twitter at Jeff Bauman. This right here is my science team, Mr. Perwin, Mr. K, myself, Mrs. O'Neill, Mr. Tsipora, Mr. D'Angelo. I love working with them, dedicated teachers. They motivate me to do awesome stuff every day. And just being part of that team is, a, is an honor and doing what we do at Shoemates. So um, next slide. Uh, this, is, this is my science teacher's playground. Uh, this is the Shoemate Middle School, Carlson High School campus. Um, it, it's a combined campus where we have the middle school on one side, the high school on the other, and we are surrounded by Lake Erie and the wetlands, and we get to do everything around there globe-wise. Um, soil moisture measurements, surface temp, measure clouds, we see it all, and it, it's, it's a dream location, and I'm very fortunate that I get to do all this work um, right there in Gibraltar, Michigan. Next slide, please. We take it up a little bit higher, satellite view. Uh, this is right over our campus, and you can see that we have two retention ponds in the wetlands off to the side there. And um, for measuring mosquitoes, we, we have a lot of water, you know, and, and that allows our students to go outside, set traps, collect samples, measure things, and it's, it's just a really, really cool setup, like I said. And in my next slide, I'm gonna go even higher, so go ahead and go to our next slide. Uh, if you find that circle, we, we really backed it up. That's Shoemate inside the red circle there. And we are right next to Lake Erie, and I thought this view was appropriate because you can see the Detroit River um, up to our upper left corner there. That's Brosiel, Michigan. That's, that's where I live. Uh, Shoemate Carlson campus is in the red circle, and you can see all the canals, the waterways. We are surrounded by water. It's, it's really cool. And then the U.S.-Canada line. Um, you can see that drawn out on the map as well. So lots of lots of opportunities. Like I said, truly blessed and, and we get to take so many different measurements. So this is where I am, where I work uh, during my day job. So uh, next slide, please. The, uh, hi, Larissa. Yes, um, the first picture that we showed a couple slides back that was taken with the Aerocats. Um, part of the Aaron project. The last two pictures um, I pulled off Google Maps, but that first one uh, we did pull that, yep, that one right there. That was pulled off the, uh, um, in a kite for the Aaron Project. Mr. Andy, Hen Andy Henry, David Belowski, Jeff Lands, and their crew. Um, that This picture was, was pulled using a kite and a GoPro camera. My students were piloting the thing. It was super cool. So um, you're welcome. Uh, let's advance back to where I was. Thank you. Uh, if we look at GLOBE protocols at Shoemate Middle School, um, I want to start off by saying I started with one thing. That was my SMAP, my SMAP mission, and I worked with Brian Campbell. He helped me get it going with David Bidlowski, Dr. Kevin Tchaikowski, University of Toledo. We started with one thing, and for all of our new teachers coming back to school this year, for you, I would suggest starting with one thing, okay? And Dorian will tell you right off the bat, do mosquitoes, okay? All right, so do that for her. You got it. So. I started with, with SMAP, and what happened is after that first year, after being trained, I started looking at the GLOBE website, and I started looking at all these other measurements, these, all these other measurements we could be taking, and I fell in love with them. And so while we were doing SMAP measurements, why not measure soil temperature? Why not measure surface temperature? The kids get to play with lasers. I mean, who doesn't want to play with an IRT laser? I mean, it's like the coolest thing ever. So we started doing more and more. Um, our Coco Ra's rain gauges got converted into globe rain gauges, and we were taking precipitation measurements, um, started measuring clouds with the one and only Marilay Colin Robles, and we, we, we started really doing a lot of cool stuff. We started measuring hydrology. Aaron Project came along. We had kites. Now we got a rover boat. Woohoo! It's super awesome. We have a remote control boat. We're getting science done. And um, we uh, are now measuring tree heights for ISAT 2 with, with Brian Campbell and his team. And Dorian came along and said, hey, Jeff, I really want to do mosquitoes. And I said, okay, sure, I'll think about it. She's like, no, Jeff, I really want to do mosquitoes with some of your students. And I said, uh, okay. And she's like, no, I really want to. And I was like, okay, we're doing it. So 
Uh, she, she wanted it and I, I thank her for doing it. So we measure mosquitoes as well. And something brand new we're gonna try this year, just letting the cat out the bag, uh, evap evapotranspiration. It's something brand new with cocoa rods. And, and we got one of those, those gauges to measure um, uh, evaporation through like a, a leaf median. And I'm, I'm ready to give that one a go. It's gonna be something really cool. So I got a new rain gauge compliments of my good friend, David Pawlowski, super awesome. So um, yes, next slide, please. Um, so right now what we have, uh, back to school, last year I had 25 um, GLOBE students. And of those 25 right now, 17 have returned. Uh, I've brought back 17. Um, they're now in seventh grade and eighth grade. And I have eight seats to fill because I can only have 25 students in my advisory because I cannot manage more than that, all right? It's kind of like my personal limit for IBSS projects. Without going completely crazy, losing what, losing what hair I have left, I cannot have more than 25, all right? So with that being said, right now, um, the 17 students that we have, we've, we've been having team meetings the last two days because this year, now that they're trained, I want them to take more ownership of Globe Advisory. And what I want them to do is I want them to design the teams, the pick the protocols they want to measure. I want them to be the ones that are making the decisions. And I don't want to be a dictator this year like I was last year. I really want them to have some ownership and take control. And so today we sat down as a team and we kind of looked at our application that we're going to pass out this week for the the last few seats and what we're going to do is use a, an online application form like this to get our advanced students uh, well to have, add more advanced students to sixth graders or seventh or eighth graders that want to join they have to do the application so this is a kind of a look right here and oh i'm sorry uh, larissa i should have stated that my uh, globe work is done during our advisory period and that's a 30 minute window this year where i get to work with our students and kind of do some advanced citizen science and um, it's now at the end of the day, so our advisory period starts at 2.40 and it runs to 3.10, all right? So it's at the end of the day. So for our new students coming in, they have to complete this application. Um, next slide, please. So at the beginning, you have your basic information. Um, students are gonna mark down what field, or what, what they wanna study, whether it's atmosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, or petosphere. And at the bottom there, you'll notice the most important part of the application is, in your opinion, why is citizen science important, all right? Being as how this is advanced work, if students don't do a good job on that essay, I'm not gonna bring them in, all right? Because to do the GLOBE work, to do the IBSS projects, to put up with me, you have to be dedicated and a little crazy. And so that, that topic right there is so important and that's kind of like the key to get in is how do you address that question and prove to me. And, and this year, the, the team that you really wanna be part of this. So once we collect all the applications, um, I'm gonna be removing the names on them and we're gonna be looking at the essays as a team to figure out the, the students that we're gonna bring in. Like I said, there's, there's kind of like a, a, an ownership that I'm passing off to the, the returning student. Uh, next slide, please. Um, cool. And then at the end of our application, uh, basically electronic signature, uh, do you agree that you're going to take part in the IBSS? Long story short, if you come in and you're not going to do the job, if you're not going to do an IBSS project, you're out. I'll find somebody else. And I don't mean to be mean about that, but this is something that we're very passionate about at Shoemate is, is, is doing the environmental research. So the students have to agree to it and they have to agree to work hard. Um, I will the bold statement, but I'll say it, you know, my advisory students, they go above and beyond what's expected of them uh, during that advisory time. And they have some extra homework that they have to do at home just to be part of this. So they, they've got to be tough if they, they want to join. Um, and then I ask, you know, to have electronic signatures from the parents, the parents read it and they send it in. Why do I use uh, Google Forms for my application? It sorts everything into a Google Sheet really nice and I can go in, I can look at the data, I can move it around, you know, link it all up and, and just assess it that way. And, and we'll use that to, you know, assess the essays once they start coming in, hopefully within a week. So I love using technology. So Google's really big for me and making things easier. And I'll show you a few things. So next slide, please. Um, our advisory, uh, basically what we do is when we get rolling, uh, students, you know, name their group. 
Um, they put their names down on this big spreadsheet and then they pick the protocols that they're, they're gonna work with and do. Now, things have changed since last year. Last year, students picked like one or two things that they were going to measure and they would do their IBSS projects around the, the one protocol or two protocols that they were going to do. That's, that's gone. Um, this year, um, after going to Globe 23 in Detroit and finally meeting all of my awesome friends, thank God, about time, um, I am going to start using the protocol bundles with my students coming up this year, and they're all going to be taking a lot more measurements, and um, they're going to be very busy, okay? So here's some pictures that we have. There's Haley right there measuring hydrology on Horse Island over in Gibraltar, uh, a little canal that empties in the Detroit River right by Lake Erie. Uh, next slide, please. And like I just said, the protocol bundles, these can be found on the GLOBE website. Uh, usually what I do is I type the word bundles in the search and um, you can find the protocol bundles. And so here is an example of some of them. I did some PD at GLOBE 23 with these and I looked at them and, and you have the mos mosquito protocol bundle, which I certainly hope Dorian's gonna do with my mosquito team this coming year. Yeah, you are. And um, ocean bundle, we can't do. Uh, rivers and lakes protocol bundle, that seems to be one that the students want to do, being right over by Lake Erie. Uh, the soil bundle, uh, I have one group that has already said they're doing that bundle. So um, these are an example, those are like uh, one, two, five of them. I think there are 10 of them maybe. So they're, they're different bundles you can find on the GLOBE website. So next slide, please. When you look at that mosquito protocol bundle, um, essentially, instead of just taking the mosquito measurement using the habitat map, the mosquito habitat mapper, uh, the students are also going to do some hydrology protocols. They're gonna measure water temp, pH, salinity, DO. And then on top of that, we'll, we'll look at the atmosphere a little more too and do air temp, rainfall, and relative humidity as well. And, and we got four people in that group and I wanna really get them hopping this year. So we're gonna take a lot more measurements put the data in a lot more places that's readily available to share with our team. And it's, it's gonna look different. It, I, I don't have it set up just yet because today was day two of the school year and um, it, it's gonna look a lot different from what I've shared in the past, right? Uh, next slide, please. So to manage all of this, I use Google Classroom and I did a presentation on this at uh, Globe 23. But that's our learning management system and I house everything in Google Classroom in a classroom called Shoemate Globe Program Advisory. And all of the students' work is hosted there, all the resources they need, we can communicate, collaborate, do whatever we need to do inside this hub and it's, it makes life so much easier for me and it helps me stay organized, especially when we're submitting nine projects from Shoemate Middle School. That's a lot. And this, this helps me do the trick, all right? Uh, next slide, please. And what I do is I, I like to bring in mentors, people that want to help my students like Dorian and, and Brian Campbell and David Bidlowski and Marilay and anybody that I can talk into helping my students, I beg, I plead, help, help, help. And they come in and they do a fantastic job. And the reason I do that, number one, the rock stars are awesome. They're the pros at it and I, I admire them. But two, when it, it, it's a lot like having a father a speech from your dad you know when, when when dad says it it kind of falls on deaf ears but when somebody else says it then oh my goodness yeah it's totally true so if i say one thing you know it's it's you know it's cool and all but then when dorian comes in and she starts telling my students about no you should really do it the way mr bauman says it's like brilliant you know and so having the ammunition to come in to drive the point home it goes a really long way okay so bringing in the experts is is the way to do it and and from what i know of my good friends at nasa and globe they're always willing to help out. And the thing is, it probably took me about two years to realize that. And then things would have been a little easier year one or year two had I really embraced that and brought them in. So always always help, ask for help with anything you're doing with Globe or, or NASA. And they're always, always ready to help. It's so cool. So this is an example of the people that I, I brought in in the past. And this year, I'm going to do that again. Next slide, please. And uh, we, what we do is... During our advisory time, uh, we use data that we collect from our weather stem station. This right here, um, the picture on the left, this three of the, the members from the Mosquito team, they're, they're talking with Dory and Janie on a webinar. And, and they go home at the end of the day and they tell their parents how they got to talk with someone from NASA. And that's so cool. And I wish I could have done that back in the day. 
and it, it's just it's so meaningful and important and it's just it's, it's culture now at shoemade we love this so we do a lot of cool things with technology next slide please this is dorian she's very passionate about her mosquitoes um i caught that picture i don't think she was expecting it but i did so and this this is us using zoom and, and we're using zoom with kids and i mean talk about cool use of technology and getting kids ready for real world application down the road so that I was on a I was on a laptop. Mohammed was on a laptop. Dorian was on a laptop. We were all talking to each other right then and there from distances. It was so cool. Next slide, please. And here's another picture. Um, there's our mosquito team on the left. Mohammed in the middle. Uh, Bailey, Olivia, Sophia is part of the team as well. And then we have another example of a webinar on the right. Next slide, please. And. One thing that I absolutely love, and when I bring my GLOBE and NASA All-Stars in, is that they give kids homework. So right here, this is an example of an assignment Dorian gave the Mosquito team to do, and it was, it was so cool because she just came in and she said, hey, this is gonna be great, this is gonna be cool. You're gonna do this, 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 and this. And she laid out the plan so beautifully for these kids. They followed all the steps. They submitted their IVSS project, and they earned four stars on it, which is the highest score that they, they could get in the, the IBSS. And, you know, just she really helped push them to, to really rock it out. It was really cool. So this is an example of something that Dorian's done for me. She'll do it for you. They'll give your kids homework. Embrace it. It's awesome. Uh, next slide. And then here's my honest reflection. I don't want to read it verbatim, but last night I sat down and I, I started thinking, what am I wondering right now? What's in my brain and how can I share that? Because maybe you're thinking the same thing. So right now, moving into this year, 1920, the, the first question I have is how am I gonna use these protocol bundles in my classroom with these students? How, how am I gonna put this into motion? And I, I have a good idea, but logistically, I, I'm still putting it together and it's gonna, we're gonna be putting it together over the next week or so. And I just gotta relax a little bit because it will all fall in place, it always does. Um, how do I set up my teams using the new student accounts and um, the Globe website? Uh, at Globe 23, Mr. Cornell Lewis was showing me how to set up the teams and how to set up new accounts. And it's an amazing new thing that Globe is doing. It's so much easier than creating student accounts. I don't know if it's ready to go. Um, but um, it's something I, I want to I do this year is figure out how I do that. How do I data share with my Globe team? So, Instead of having three teams go outside and measure the same rain gauge, how do I have a designated rock star go out, measure the rain, put it somewhere um, where all of the teams can access the rain and it's always readily available data, work smarter, not harder. So that's my third question. Um, how do I find an expert for all of my globe teams? Last year, uh, I tried to align an expert with each team. And what happened is people got busy and there were some teams that didn't find an expert. and so. I think instead of saying, hey, Dorian, will you work with just my mosquito team? I might just make it so where it's an open forum where you can come in, see something, and, and rock it out and help all of the teams if you'd like. Uh, that way everybody gets help. And I think, too, I probably could have done a better job, you know, lo looking locally to see if I could find an expert to come in and mentor our students. And maybe I could have been a little more pushy than I already am. Um, but I think maybe that was something I could have done better last year just to reflect. Um, the next one is something I'm very proud of. Uh, the question is, how can I support Mrs. Gardner, who is an ELA teacher that we have at Shoemate, but she also has a health and disease elective. Uh, Mandy Gardner is an amazing teacher, and she helps me with all the duck releases at Shoemate, and when she heard about the mosquito stuff, I started sharing out what we do. She started saying, hey, I really want to pull some of this mosquito work into my elective. So she's secretly a science teacher stuck teaching language arts which is like the worst situation possible all right but she wants to do this and how can i help her to bring another globe teacher on and how can we make our impact spread our impact uh to to a different classroom and so having mrs gardner join forces with me is something that i'm really looking forward to and then the, the question other two questions real quick uh how do i better connect with teachers from across the world and the most important one is how do I get to Globe 24? Because after Globe 23, I want to go to Globe 24, 25, 26, 27. And from there on out, because that was a game changer for me. And I want to come back and, and, and bring students and just go to the PD and, and be with all my friends from Globe again. So it was, it was a game changer. Next slide, please. Now that my voice is killing me, 
What questions do you have? Well, Jeff, I'm going to jump in and ask you a question. So, you know, you have all of these students that are in your advisory period and they're doing, you know, the, the, they're, they're focusing on these different questions and, and doing these different investigations. How do you keep it all straight? I got to be honest, there are days I don't. <laughs> I, you know, they're, they're driven. I mean, once they get the question going and, and like Dr. Dixon Butler in the upper right hand corner there or, or Brian Campbell who'll come in and they'll post comments in the Google classroom and say hey how about you tweak it like this once we get that question set we're good to go you know they they they're on top of it um, we had a hard time last year with our surface temperature group and um, Dr. Tchaikovsky uh, kept Dr. Dr. C he came in and he made some suggestions and then Nick, Adeline, and uh, Chloe, they went to town. I mean, once they knew the direction, they're good to go, but you have to get that direction. That's, that's the biggest thing, okay? Uh, one of the questions I saw in the chat was, I believe Larissa asked, Jeff, what do you do with parents and concerns about mosquitoes? Um, the one thing that we do is we always say safety first, okay? Um, essentially, you know, if you're not comfortable doing it, then we'll find a different thing for you to study, you know? And, and the group that's working with Dory, they're all in, they, uh, they, they, they're safe, their parents are cool with it, you know, long sleeves, mosquito repellent, whatever it takes. So that's, that's kind of how we handle that. Um, in the past, I've had a few issues. Uh, when we were obtaining water from the pond for hydrology measurements, uh, a student threw the bucket in the middle of the pond and uh, the bucket got stuck and they decided to walk into the pond with their awesome Air Jordan tennis shoes on that cost about 150 bucks, I guess. And uh, their parent wasn't too happy about that. And so after that moment, we had the no pond rule where you weren't allowed to go in the pond anymore. And uh, you, trial and, you know, trial and error, you learn by, by doing it, I guess. So just, you're not gonna have it right the first year. You're not gonna have it right the second year. The third year, you're gonna start to get it a little bit more. And then year four, which is really kind of where I'm at right now, you kind of get a, a better picture in your mind of where you want to go and how you make the system yours and how you want to engage your students your way. I've, I have stolen so many ideas from so many cool people over the years. I can't take cre full credit for everything I do. Uh, I just, I steal bits and pieces. I see things and I, I do it my way. You know, I want to be a, a game changer. I want to break the mold. I don't, I don't, I don't like following exactly the same way somebody's already done it unless it's like, you know, the only way, I guess. So something to keep in mind. You know, Jeff, I, I think what you say is, is, you know, so important and, uh, and, and, you know, ever so true. And, and that is as an educator, you know, you look around and you see these really neat things that other people are doing. And I think a couple things can happen. One is you can be a little bit, um, I don't know, frustrated is the word, but maybe sometimes it's overwhelmed and feeling like, gosh, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I was thinking back Back to those teachers that I had that that were brand new teachers and they just were so excited about starting the new year and they were gonna do you know everything and then once they had the kids and they had the you know papers to grade and you know the emails coming in and all that they were just you know deer in the headlights I don't even know how I'm gonna get through tomorrow and um, you know teaching I believe having having done it for for 30 years is um, the most difficult job ever, but I also think it is the most important job ever because you are impacting, you know, if you're teaching middle school, 150 and, and in high school, you know, kids a day. and elementary school, you're like, a, a, you know, another parent to 27, 30 kids day after day after day. You are just absolutely important. And so, you know, sometimes it's easy to feel overwhelmed. And I really like, Jeff, your suggestion of start somewhere jump in somewhere, you know, do one of them. I, I also found in this day of, you know, computer technology that I could allow my students to do a lot more of taking control over kind of their education and steering their education. I had to be sure, like using things like Google Classroom that, that Jeff uses, which I I find is an incredibly effective tool, um, you know, that you're steering students toward the right resources and, 
then ensuring that they're that they're you know using those resources and collecting the right information but it's really neat to no longer be the sage on the stage and kind of step back to guiding them and and working with them now jeff i see that there there have been two questions and i think these are super important how are you connecting with other globe teachers around the world so i will stop talking and let you answer that for me right now it's it's really like the sharing of ideas like i've connected with a lot of people and i kind of have a good idea what's where um for example i know croatia they take a lot of SMAP measurements and when my SMAP team needed to find comparison data we we went to croatia you know and it's just all these webinars you talk with so many people you change you exchange so many emails you kind of get a feel for where they are and what they're doing um but what happens is you have different languages and that, that can be difficult time zones oh my goodness time zones are tough you know just just trying to get on the same page um that that's really tricky so you know from time to time it's it's a matter of you know just talking with the teachers seeing who's doing what and then you go to the globe website you find their data and and, and you pull it up and i guess if you have questions about it you know you can um you, you can email them and they usually get back with you right away that's that's really um I guess how I'm doing it right now. But as you saw in my questions on the page before, I would really like to do a better job connecting. I mean, that's that's me being completely honest, throwing myself under the bus, is that I could do a better job of that. Um, it's just so hard to do all those measurements when you only have, last year was 22 minutes, I think. This year I got 30 minutes, but it's the end of the day, you know? So it's, it's still kind of tricky, but I, I could definitely do a better job. But, you know, just just, you know, kind of like a, last little thought here i guess is that if you look at this this these pictures that i put up last night I, I i did that strategically is that you look at the images and you see smiles on all the faces you know and it's just whether it's me working with other awesome people from around the world uh like our aaron project in the upper left or writing uh an, an awesome article with marilay colin robles which is coming out very soon and or my students you know you see the smiles on their faces it's it's a different it's a game changer is what i guess i'm trying to say here is it, it's made such an impact that you can't ignore it you know it's it's one of the coolest things I, i've started doing and tonight working with my college students one of my assignments is they're all going to be globe certified teachers before they pass this class and so they get certified in seven areas it's something i believe in and that's um that's non-negotiable for me. So it's it's good stuff. Well, Jeff, give your voice a rest. Thank you so, so much. You are just as as always um, really an amazing champion for us with, with the GLOW program. And we just we, we so appreciate the work you do. And I'm really excited to be working with you and your students this year. Um, I did want to throw one thing out there, uh, one more thing out there. Um, and as you were talking, Jeff, about how that's that's one of the things you want to work, you know, work more on. That that's really an important part of being a reflective practitioner is being able to kind of look at what are the things that I want to, you know, try to get in this year. I've got, you know, this far, and now how do I how do I add these components? I will say that um, we are happy to assist with that. We, as in those of us with the uh, Globe Mission Mosquito Campaign, we keep track of the teachers and citizen scientists who are regularly collecting data and also you know the people who um, would like to collaborate with others. I'm going to be assisting a class of 11th and 12th grade students from Prince George's um, County Public Schools who are English speakers of other languages and we are going to be working really hard to connect the students um, with uh, other students so that they can be emailing on a regular basis in Colombia, um, also Brazil, and in um, Senegal, and in Thailand. So that's a, a, a very big goal. But I figure that even if the students have, you know, four or five email connections with the other students and are regularly looking at those other students' data using, you know, the easily accessible um, data visualization tools on GLOBE, that that will be huge. So thank you so much. And now without further ado, um, let's go to the next slide, please. And we're going to be hearing from another absolute champion working with students in both formal and informal settings. 
and that is our very dear friend Erqui or Erquinio Tabor de Martinez, and he's coming to us from Colombia. He will be talking a little bit in Spanish, and then Marle will be translating what he has to say. And for uh, Erqui, apparently in Colombia, it is one hour earlier now, so um, times have shifted, and so thus uh, he was off a little bit. But welcome, buenos noches, and muchas gracias for being here tonight, Erqui. Buenas noches. ¿Cómo te vas, Jane? Bien, gracias. Y bueno, un saludo a todos los compañeros que están vinculados a través de este medio importante eh, participando en este webinar. So hello everybody and welcome to the webinar. Erquinio is very excited to have you all here. Hola Marile, ¿cómo estás? <laughs> Bien y tú, Erquinio. <laughs> Excelente. Una pregunta del video. Hello. And I think next slide, please. Okay. Bueno, en, en las diapositivas aparecen en, hablar de cerca de los protocolos GLOB que nosotros desarrollamos acá en Colombia. Tenemos el protocolo de nubes, de temperatura superficial, mosquito habitat maper y árboles. So in the pictures on the slide, you can see all the different GLOBE protocols that um, Erquinio and his students do, which includes clouds, which he's been doing for a long time, um, uh, surface temperature, mosquito habitat mapper, and then tree height. En la imagen aparecen mis estudiantes en la escuela donde yo laboro, que es acá en Barranquilla. En, yo, uh, digamos, mi asignación en, en las clases son de estadística y yo a través de las clases de estadística, de, de estadística desarrollo el, los protocolos de GLOB. And then you can see the students in the school in Barranquilla where Erquinio works and what he teaches is statistics. Um, so through the, that class of statistics is how he introduces GLOB to the students. Nueva, eh, la siguiente diapositiva, por favor. And next slide. Eh, la institución donde laboro tiene tres años de, de estar funcionando y está constantemente renovada. Una de ellas es que estamos sembrando árboles en toda la ciudad, alrededor de 10.000 árboles. Eso nos llamó la atención a nosotros para que los estudiantes en clase tuvieran la la posibilidad de utilizar la aplicación árboles y pudieran hacer un, una medición día a día eh, para establecer cómo crecen estos árboles que están siendo trasplantados. So one of the neat things about the school that Erquinio works at is that it's um, it's been around for three years and they are reestablishing the area around the school and one of the things that they're doing is planting trees i believe i heard 10,000 trees in total so um and they are very excited with globe and particular the trees um app so that they can make daily measurements and see how their trees that they planted are doing okay uh, con respecto al al protocolo de mosquitos eh, nos dimos cuenta que eh, la ciudad de Barranquilla es muy endémica, o sea, acá constantemente hay casos de dengue, de enfermedades que se transmiten a través de los mosquitos. Eh, en la institución, en el sector donde nosotros vivimos, eh, trabajamos, perdón, eh, noté que muchos niños tenían fiebre, dolores de cabeza, todas las enfermedades, digamos, asociadas al, a la enfermedad que transmiten los mosquitos. Hicimos una labor donde primero les hice un entrenamiento a los niños en, en el salón de clase para que ellos utilizaran la aplicación. Luego los entrené para que ellos lograran traer las, las larvas al colegio. Y fue un, todo un éxito. Los niños eh, supieron, aprendieron a rotular, a, a, digamos, a almacenar las larvas en, en botellas plásticas y luego a utilizar el, 
el instrumento asociado al, celu al celular, la lupa, para poder aplicar el, el protocolo de mosquito habitat mate. The group was very interested in Mosquito Habitat Mapper because a lot of the kids or they were noticing in the community that kids were suffering from illnesses that are disease causing or caused by mosquitoes like dengue and they were having lots of fever. So they saw it as a community involvement. Um, Erquinio was trained in the protocol, then he trained the students on the protocol and then how to get the larvae. And the students also learn how to maintain or keep the larvae um, in bottles, in plastic bottles. And then they learned how to use the magnifying glass that you can use with the Mosquito Habitat Mapper or as part of the Globe Observer app to then look at the larvae and do the identification portion. Okay, y las larvas ellos las traen desde su casa. O sea, ellos no tienen que ir a, a ningún lugar lejano. En el interior de su casa tienen larvas, ya que sus familiares conservan plantas acuáticas, floreros, eh, digamos, encontramos contenedores artificiales en la misma casa. Eh, pareciera un problema cultural porque eh, desconocían que tenían las larvas en sus propios apartamentos. Gracias a la investigación que desarrollamos con Glock, nosotros logramos crear un plan de acción comunitario. En este plan de acción comunitario, estamos logrando que los niños participen activamente. So something that Aquino wants to point out is all these larvae that the kids are bringing are from their own homes. Um, there are a lot of um, pots and plants and using um, aqua, um, growing plants with water around the houses. And um, that's how the, the parents and the people taking care of the kiddos noticed that they were harboring larvae already in their homes. So it, it's a cultural thing. Um, but then it's also a learning opportunity um, for them to investigate what can they do, what is harboring in their homes, and then um, an action plan. So it's become a whole community involvement. And I see that I, uh, we have lost the audio perhaps from, uh, from Eric. How about if we go ahead and go to the next slide? And I will jump in while we wait for, for him to come back because um, I assisted with making these slides um, and he sent me the information. So while we're waiting for him to come back, one of the things he said that is happening with these new trees that they planted is each of the students has adopted a different tree, which I think is such a brilliant idea. And so the students will go out and use the app and will you know, take a picture every day, every week, of their tree that they've adopted and be keeping you know an eye on how it is growing so yeah what a, what a neat idea and it's a very nice idea to do the trees and the land cover and the mosquitoes all together because of course um mosquitoes are looking for vegetation after they've laid their eggs to be resting on and we know that that is one of the environmental you know factors that we see when we're talking about mosquitoes. Next slide, please. Um, here he has the soccer team and uh, Erqui is the coach for the soccer team and he is a, a soccer or football as it is rightly called, um, uh, football team coach there. So we see him standing there proudly with his team and his team also brings in their um, their samples of water. So on the right hand side, what you see there is that is a sample from from the home of one of the students. You know, with the vegetation and sometimes the herbs that they use in the cooking that are growing. But you know, also one of the things that can happen with these types of mosquitoes that we're most concerned about, the ones that are container breeders, is they will go inside the home and and have the larva. So it's really, really nice to be bringing um, to the, um, the, the thought of, of, of the students and their families, the idea that when you do have 
these plants and the water in the home, you do need to keep very aware of the fact that you may have mosquito larvae inadvertently um, that are, you know, also breeding in, in that water. Next slide, please. Here we see some pictures of some of the larvae from the students' homes. It's really neat. What the students do is sometimes they create um, mosquito traps, but other times it's just the dishes that they have, you know, sitting around inside the homes. And so he has them put the um, water and the larvae into a uh, bottle or a jar that has, uh, you know, a top that can close. And he has taught them to use a Sharpie and to write on the outside the date and the place where they have collected their larva from. And that is a part of their data collection and, uh, and, and you know, data observations um, as they get together and they look over the larva and identify the species of larva that they have. Next slide, please. So here are some examples of doing the larva identification. When we got together in Detroit this summer, um, it was absolutely amazing to have Erqui sit down and, and show me how he keys in the larva. And I could tell that he is just a pro at this because just within minutes, he had the larva and he had worked out how to use the, uh, the cell phone magnifier. I, I had a, a new kind of improved magnifier, which I actually ended up giving him to take back to Columbia with him because he was so excited about the fact that this, uh, this higher power magnifier that I have that goes to about 120 times was so much more powerful than, than what he already had. So he does a great job, next slide please, of helping the kids to do this larva identification. And here you can see just some more pictures. He knows and helps the students to go in and look at the siphon and look at, at the various features that are really important in doing the larva identification. Next slide please. And one of the things that, of course, is, is, is concerning is that they have found a lot of Aedes aegypti, which are um, one of the vector mosquitoes that uh, transmit diseases. So that's something that he has been making the students aware of, is the fact that these Aedes aegypti will transmit, can transmit disease, and to be alert and aware, um, and, and to make sure that they are uh, reducing the, the potential habitats for these mosquitoes. And next slide, please. Then what he also does is he works in the community on Saturday. So this is where he takes it to the informal level as well. So not only is he working with students in the classrooms during the school day, but once a month he gets together with students and, and sometimes their parents as well. And they go out and they walk around and they actually interact with the community in, in a couple of different areas. And they work on looking at potential mosquito breeding habitats. They also work on informing the community about protection and prevent, preventative measures. And they um, work on identifying the species of larva that they find in these different areas. Next slide, please. And here are some of the students working on the left-hand side. And then over on the right-hand side, we can see a picture of them getting together in one of the parks. I know that that is in Barranquilla. Um, what's really neat is that Erqui and I keep in touch on WhatsApp. And sometimes when he's working with the students, he'll give me a call. And so I will get a chance to have the, the students walk me around and show me um, the areas in which they're collecting the data. And I will speak in my very not that great Spanish, though, which I'm working on improving, and they will speak in English, which is much better than my Spanish, and we always manage to communicate, which is wonderful. Next slide, please. And here he is, and, and just some more pictures of the students. You see, um, in some cases here, some of the students are wearing gloves, especially the ones that are going in and actually, you know, collecting the water. They obviously have, have, uh, tools for measuring different things. And one of the young women on the left-hand side, her name is Danielle, we met her when she came to Detroit this year for the Globe meeting. And she has now been accepted and is attending college and is just an absolute phenomenal uh, asset to the work that Erqui does. But also she has been very, very transformed um, by being a part of, of these efforts and has decided to pursue a career in science. Next slide, please. 
And here we see not only do they find mosquito larvae, but every now and then they also find a, a few fish. So that's kind of fun. Next slide, please. And this is one of the things that, uh, that the students are responsible for doing um, in this informal setting is they take the different regions that they're going to and they actually draw a two scale map and keep track of the areas and the regions that they're going to be covering and then keep track of the land cover and even the topography for those different areas. So that's kind of a neat idea um, to, to make yourself and your students more aware and to take advantage of those who are more artistically inclined and have them assist with creating this, this kind of graphic organizer to help keep track of these places. Next slide, please. So just a, a, a huge round of applause and muchas gracias. Uh, and to Erqui and to Marielle, uh, for, for helping to do the, um, the translating. We so appreciate it. And I hope that, that people have come away with some ideas um, for ways in which they can help their students to work with uh, the Mosquito Habitat Mapper and other GLOBE tools as well, both in formal and informal education settings. So we have an, a couple more webinars we wanna tell you about, and then we're probably going to be reducing the number of webinars. We realize that two webinars a month is too many. So we're gonna be uh, combining forces and probably just having one webinar a month. Um, so our next Citizen Science webinar will be on September 25th, and you're gonna learn what happens to your data. You're collecting all this data, you're sending it in, what happens to it? And then the education webinar on October 8th at 8 p.m., I have a couple of the graduate students who are doing research with mosquitoes and uh, mosquito transmitted disease from the University of Maryland Entomology Department who are going to be talking about the research that they do and um, giving us a feel for what it's like at the graduate level to be conducting research with mosquitoes. So we do hope that you will consider joining us. And please, if anyone has questions about how they might use Globe Mission Mosquito and the Mosquito Habitat Mapper or any of the other Globe protocols or tools, feel free to get in touch with myself, Dorian Janney, Cassie, with any of us who are you know, on this team because we really are, as, as Jeff said, we are here to help you, to support you, to collaborate with you. you know, that's just a part of our job that just makes it all worthwhile. So I hope you have the most wonderful school year for those of you who are just starting out. For those of you like our, our uh, rock star, Anez, um, who is coming to us from Brazil, who uh, the classes have been in session for a while, and now you're just starting to, uh, to head towards spring. Um, we are so glad to have you with us and hope you'll, you'll continue along and teach us what you're doing. Um, Mr. Getting Science Done, Jeff Bauman, you rock. Thank you so much, really, really appreciate it. Um, Marielle, thank you so much for doing your translation. Um, Erqui, thank you so much for joining us. Sorry for the technological problems, but it was all good. You and I keep in touch on such a regular basis, and I got your wonderful pictures, and uh, I just I feel like I know that the, the work that you're doing really well. Um, I will stay on a few more minutes and just see if there's any questions, um, but we thank you. We thank you, and uh, thank you, um, all of you educators, for the work that you're doing. We thank you for your service. There's no harder or more important job in, in all of the world. And, and we are humbled and appreciative of the work that you're doing. So thank you. Muchas gracias, señor. <laughs>